Well, I'm pretty inept with uh, computers, even though I make a living out of it. In a way, I think it's better to not be good at it. So when I realized I needed an iPhone, I, had all the moves, I decided to, um, you know, try to use it with Econ Station. I mean, everything I have is on Econ Station. You know, I'm running my business on Econ Station. I'm doing everything. So having a smartphone, well, I, don't, I don't like phones much anyway. So the fact that you can make calls is like a disadvantage. So I got an iPad. My eyes aren't so good anyway. I figured a bigger screen would be better. But you know, I realize iOS, it really doesn't matter what device you got, iPod Touch or iPad or iPhone. They're all pretty much the same, except an iPhone can make calls. And so I'm not going to tell you how an iPhone makes calls, because I don't know. But, um, With the iPhone, with any of the iOS devices, and I presume this applies to other platforms as well, a lot of it is uh, based on operating with their own cloud service. And I you was know, like, okay, great, but I have everything on EcomStation, and they haven't really thought through any of the connection between EcomStation and their their smart device, and so. You know, I, I read a lot about people were hacking into it and trying to write files directly over USB or jailbreaking. And it's like, that doesn't sound right. I mean, that sounds really wrong. Every time they make a change, my jailbreak will break or I have the wrong file in there. I don't want to go there. I want to just use it the way it was meant to be used and integrate e-computation as much as possible. And basically, the device is useless to me unless it's using my data on e-computation. So, um, first of all, I need to get my files onto the iPad, or you know, get access to the files on the iPad. So, how do I share eCompStation files? And that'll be the first part of the presentation. Um, once they're shared, how do I access them on the iPad? Is the second sort of section of the uh, presentation. If I'm on my, if I've got my files and I'm using them and I'm processing them, how do I actually edit them on the conversation, even though they're iPad files. And that is the iCloud suite which runs in the Firefox browser, so that's the third part. And finally, what ecom station applications can I use to native applications to edit iPad data? So uh, that's the final ecom station, which turns out to be a very short section. Uh, so sharing ecom station files, um, one of the disadvantages, if I want to carry this phone or iPad around all over the place, and I got my computer at home, then I'm going to have to kind of share. And I'm going to, I, I didn't really get too much into the router program for that. But uh, EconStation systems, I, I think, are fairly safe on the internet. Uh, you know, I got the logs. I can see, I put it up on the internet, and people start pounding. <laughs> so don't have an easy to guess password, because the, you know, if seconds after you attach to the internet, they're going to start dictionary attacking. Yeah, so don't use a password that's in the dictionary. Not, not even close to in the dictionary. And you know, if you've used the password out on the internet a lot, someone has broken into the site you gave it and, and downloaded it. So don't use a password you've used on the internet. But other than those two things, you know, a password plus the econ station, OK, they get in. Now they're on econ station. Uh, unless you're in this room, you don't know what to do with that. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my uh, Unix friends call it security by obscurity. And um, we are well protected. <laughs> Inside the house, um, I don't, my router won't let Samba through. But I set up Samba server. And inside the house, I can get to anything on my machine. Uh, anybody who can connect to my router, basically, over Wi-Fi can do that. Or it has a physical connection to my network. Um, that's not very far. Actually, the students next door can do it, but they're also unlikely to be able to do anything with any computation file. So, <laughs> um, PMVNC server. This is a nice desktop sharing program that we have on eCompStation, and uh, I was hoping to demonstrate it right here. It works in my hotel room, but it depends on the hotel router to allow my eCompStation machine to appear as a server and connect to it. So, it, router by router, it works or doesn't work. 
Uh, many routers are programmed to just not permit two clients of the router to communicate to each other. So, and uh, I use uh, Peter Moylan's FTP server. Uh, I don't know how many people have set up an FTP server on uh, on a comp station, but uh, Peter Moylan is tired of doing his software anymore. Uh, and has recently open sourced it as, uh, I think, preparation for stepping out of the development role. Uh, everything's in Modula 2. I'm hesitant to pick up building anything in Modula 2. I know some people in the room like to build anything that comes out for Ecom Station, and I'm hoping that one of these heroes will come in <laughs> and figure out Modula 2. And did, did he make that compiler available? <laughs> you can't get that thing anymore. I, He's working on it. The problem is, is Excelsior is not being extremely responsive to it. Mm -hmm. like it. The thing is, what happened with Excelsior is all the other platforms made it freeware. Right. Yeah. For one reason or another, they never finished making the OS2 platform freeware. Uh -huh. And module and really, you know, it's like everything else. It's just <coughs> a compiler, and it's actually in some ways simpler than others because it's sort of not. It's got its sort of own built-in build system. So mm -hmm. once you get used to its idiosyncrasies, you just say go and it builds stuff. Yeah. So it's actually not hard to do modular Pascal with some embellishment. So yeah. any, if you can read it, you know, the stuff, and you're not like it's not like anybody's gonna be writing code from scratch for it. All the code's there, it's yeah. just gonna be fixing the really hard defects. Right. Because Peter took care of all the easy ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it may be that after it's open source, we won't need to do that much, but well, you never well, know. It does need some stuff if you really want to roll it out. Unfortunately, you never really got IMAP done in the state. Yeah. So for those folks that really want to use it in an environment that need, they're not really, they need an IMAP server, they need it. Yeah. And for those of us that are on the list, you know the individuals that really need it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think Pascal, because there's an open Pascal development. It's, no, 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 you can't, you, that's not the way to go. Yes, you could convert it to Pascal, though you don't want to. No. It's like taking a visual aid program and converting it to GCC. It can be done, but it's never, it's never not trivial. Yeah, okay. you'll, you'll introduce bugs doing it, and the whole point is we have this thing that's pretty bug-free the way it is. Yeah, that compiler's pretty nice, that thing, has a whole IE and everything. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, we just cough it up. Okay. Um, FTP server is not obvious to how to configure at first. Um, the space that you're sharing, you make a virtual root directory. Actually, you can do it a number of ways, but what I recommend is that you make a virtual root directory and then put your real directories as links under that so that you're not actually sharing the guts of your machine. Each user, you say, I know what this user has got, and yeah. he's only got what I say he's got. So, um, you know, this didn't come out that clearly as far as the screenshot, but, uh, you know, you enter your username, enter your password, and then there's a directories list, and then down the bottom it says edit directories. That's where you're going to make this virtual directory. Actually, it comes up by default as a virtual directory, and then you'll add your directories under it. So, yeah, top level is a pseudo directory, he calls it. Subdirectories are links. And you just, I made all, you know, for the open access, I've made all my drives links, and, you know, I can get to the whole machine. But I would say I have it much more restricted than that. But, you know, here it is if you want to make a totally open machine. And, you know, I, I will probably change my mind about what is open and what is closed, depending on what I see in the logs and how good the hackers are getting into my machine. <laughs> well, that's the big problem with FTP. If we start, we don't have an SFTP use, you, so uh, your passwords are wide open. Yeah. So anybody who's actually man in the middle, you are in trouble. But in practice, it really doesn't happen. That's that's what I'm relying on. This is not a very secure way of doing things. Um, we could not. When I think about what would be a better way to share files out on the internet from the comp station, web, web dev sounds like it would be a better choice. Over HTTPS, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I follow the development of that, but we have obstacles. So. 
Uh, Samba server. Um, yeah, so it needs to be set up in the hotel. Well, it didn't didn't work down here. It worked up in my room. I don't know what to say. I can't de demonstrate it. Samba server is interesting to install. Um, different people get different results. My recipe for installing it is to download the big Warbin installer for it, run it. It will fail, but it will leave a lot of the files on the on the machine. Just run the installer again, and it almost always works the second time. <laughs> Occasionally, I'll reboot and run it a second time, and then it'll work. Yes. No, it, it's not perfect. You say just run warp in twice. Yeah, and then <laughs> yeah. configuration. I have more to say about that sort of stuff later. Oh, good, good. Because um, I didn't want to spend too much time saying, you know, here's Samba server, here's the defects. Uh, if you're used to administering a server, this is probably not so hard. You know, you'll come up, you have to set a root password, and then you can say, well, I can use their tools, or I can just go into the uh, smb.conf file and look at it, look at the comments, and edit all your shares and users. And uh, It's not that hard, and yet, to someone who has never set up a server before, now I have to explain the entire concept of setting up a server, and that's hard. It's both serving files, and you know, you have users, you can have a configuration per user. And I don't want to, you know, this is about really the interaction of an iPad with ecom station, not how to set up a server. How to it's okay, if they have a problem, they call What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or um, email. I, I originally had wanted to set up a little course on how to set up Samba, and um, I started the web page in the Bay Warp group, and we actually had several Bay Warp meetings where we had them at Jim's house, where we set up servers, we, and we tried to get it to work, and we, we've had a lot of frustration. <laughs> but um, they have since fixed a few bugs. I find it to work. Other people are saying no, it crashes after a while, and I'm not actually with my limited use of it, I'm not even seeing that. I'm, and for people who are on other platforms, uh, latest Mac shares beautifully with Samba server. It litters your drive with little Mac files, which are the, I think the, what do you call those? The, the, the other information, the non-file information. I think it's the resource port. Port. Resource port. Resource port. Port. It's still yeah. called a resource port? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and, and it implements those beautifully as a set of directories and files. Um, I wish they would come up by default hidden, and I wish that Samba respected those flags better, but it's, you know, it's a port meant for Unix flags, not OS2 flags, so technically it doesn't work perfectly, and you're going to see those files all over the place if you browse the Mac. If you browse with the iPad, no such thing happens. So that's it. They have done some fixes that fit the stops and crashes, that, but they haven't released it yet. Okay. Built it from source and uh -huh. these types of stuff. The sound but these are stopped. Okay, good. Because um, other people have been complaining about those crashes that I tried it, I can't use it. Uh, I don't know if it's the same crashes, but they fixed some crashes I would have. I have had very few problems of that nature with this on the server. And well, I have for years without any problems, and all of a sudden it was crashing all the time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I have no idea why. Right. I built a new one. I've just been lucky and not wandered into that by being part of the code. Uh, and it's fast. I, I was at first very slow to want to change from warp server. And, um, I There's no, no difference. There is just no comparison between here, room, warp server, and how fast Sonic is. Yeah, I, I have no performance issue with it. And uh, it it's, well, it's, it's fine. The setup's hard, but that will get fixed if someone focuses on it. And that's the big thing, to get people to focus on the thing that are really giving people problems. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you know, people need to get on to Samba server to the extent that it works, but they have issues, and then they can start reporting bugs. But when you're starting out and it's it's kind of hard, it's not well documented, it's, it's, and there's issues with the installer and issues with the configuration programs, and you can never get up to the point where you, you're getting anything, and so it's kind of frustrating. You say, well, it doesn't work, and that's not what the developer wants to hear. <laughs> he wants to hear something you can fix. So, um, going on from Samba server, uh, PMVNC server is actually very easy to set up. You install it, you 
run this server once by hand on your computer to set the password, or there's a, a command line, but you know, the, the first time it comes up, it's going to ask for the password. Write in the password. There's just one password for your machine. It's You can make the password as long as you want. It won't accept it more than certain characters, and if you make it longer, it just ignores the extra. So yeah, it's it's pretty tolerant. That's, I, that, that's, that's BNC. It's not ours. That's BNC. That's BNC's problem. OK. And, um, it interoperates with the other VMCs that I've seen. It interrupts with the iPad, Windows, uh, Windows 64 bit. Uh, I haven't tried other platforms, but I, I think VMC interoperates pretty well. And, uh, it's, it's not secure. And I asked Stephen for files, which he provided to me, on how to make that secure. And I never quite followed up on that because I ran into other things to do. So unencrypted connections. Again, security by obscurity. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, the best thing I can say is choose a difficult password. I've uh, found that every time I had a security problem, it was because I picked too easy a password and someone guessed it. And, um, you know, if you're out on the internet, they have all the time they need to just pound and pound and pound until they guess. And, you know, there's only so many words in the dictionary one per second, now they're going to cover it in a few days. So, Sorry, but your password must contain an uppercase letter, a number, a haiku, a gang sign, a hieroglyph, and the blood of a virgin. Just choose your own. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Router configuration. Uh, I guess I did put a page in there. Uh, most routers will let you set a DMZ. And I set that to my machine. That allow, that forwards all traffic coming into your router to your Econ Station machine. It's, um, hopefully, you have other protection, because that will open up the sound of the server to outside. I, I know that at least my ISP, no, it doesn't <laughs> open up the sound of the server to the outside. <laughs> so uh, no matter what I do to the router, um, many ISPs probably protect you in that way also. But FTP goes through, mail goes through, everything else goes through. Um, you can usually configure routers to allow that stuff. I mean, I have so it that way. Yeah. Why would you use the router security? Well, I, that's what I'm saying. Firewall programming, instead of using the DMC, you can use port forwarding. Yeah, that's right. You can port, port forward only the ports that you need, uh, which is 5900 for DMC. Uh, uh, FTP, I think, is 21. And you may want to open up Telnet or not. Um, well, what you can do, if you're going to do that, though, you can actually port, port and have it come in on a different port by coming in at 59,000 mm -hmm. and go to your server, to the OS2 server at 59,000. Yeah, that's what I do, actually. I use different ports. You use know, different ports? That way they don't know what they did. When they... Oh, OK. So even if they find the open port, they don't yeah. know what they found. There. So in addition to making it obscure by a station, you can make it obscure by using the wrong port. Then. Okay, I use my building address. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good suggestion. If I make this into a web page, I'm going to add that. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> there's my port forwarding, uh, which includes some other projects, but um, yeah, basically, yeah, that's too small to read, but. Uh, DMZ was the <coughs> bottom line. SMB, FTP, Telnet, and DNC were the four services I port forwarded through the firewall. And then I can turn off DMZ and I can still do all my control. Um, okay, using the iPad, um, the number of applications on the iPad, some built in, some that I downloaded from the App Store to make it reasonable to use an iPad with uh, with eCompetition. Um, Notes is not so much good with the eCompetition, but I was concerned about just you know keeping notes. I had to carry a notebook everywhere, and I said, this is stupid. I'm carrying a smart device. It's got to be able to replace my notebook. So, um, And then I found that this was a nice thing to share. So Notes. It can be stored on your phone or iPad, but they also work over an IMAP server. So I reconfigured my uh, iPad to store the notes on the iCloud IMAP server. 
and then I can easily get them under th Thunderbird, or I can use the iCloud application on Firefox to edit the notes. And that's pretty nice because I can be sitting there typing a note, put down the machine, go over to the other machine, and pick up where I left off. And it's backed up character by character. And on Firefox, it's kind of slow. It's like character by character, except, OK, now wait for a minute, and then it's backed up. So, and you can see it back up, so you know whether it is or not. But yeah, with my notes, and basically I have a note for every day. I'm keeping a little diary, and you know, every day I make notes. And it's synced between all the machines, and I can search it using Thunderbird. So better than my old paper notebook. Um, yeah, configuration, like I say, go into the iCloud. Uh, I don't expect that the, this is actually that useful a slide. <laughs> uh, I thought I was going to have the iPad hooked up to the TV, but it didn't, didn't turn out to work that well. Um, camera. I, I, you know, everyone's using phones as a camera. The iPad is the same. It's a pretty decent camera on it. Um, and so I said, well, what? How does that work? And so at first I was just plugging it in using uh, USB into the decontation loads, um, using camaraderie and the, what is that called, PPTP protocol. It shows up as a camera. There's nothing else but a camera shown if I do uh, USB resource manager and just print out what's, what is uh, iPad offering. Nothing but camera. There's no mass storage. There's no, nothing else. So it's only offering camera. So, okay, I can use it as just as if I had a digital camera and you know, drag, drag off the photos into Ecom Station and delete them off of the iPad, whatever. Um, when it does that, it says, can I trust this computer on the iPad? So I have to, I plug it in. Then I have to say, yes, I trust this computer. It doesn't remember. And then camaraderie has already tried to negotiate. It says, I can't negotiate with this camera, with this uh, camera, and exits. So then the second time I enter camaraderie, the trust is already there, and it lists out my photos. It works just like it was a camera. So it's not perfect, but it's pretty close. Um, looks like a camera to me. I don't use it this much. Uh, later on, I found that I had other programs to work with Ecom Station, and I could just copy from the photos directory and paste onto the ecom station machine and it would go over Wi-Fi. So that was much better than using the USB. And I don't have to remember where the USB cable is and hook it up or anything close from anywhere in the house. So you, you can't home. take pictures with it. What? You can't from your ecom station so you take a picture. No, uh, that's a feature of PTTP. Um, uh, I've tried it with camera after camera. No camera that I've connected to ecom station seems to support that feature. Oh, the camera may support it, but our software may not support it. I don't know what the limitation is. I, I even wrote, someone made a Rex interface to the uh, PPTP library. And I even used that to say, OK, shoot a picture right now. I sent the right command to shoot a picture, and it didn't shoot a picture. So I thought that would be kind of nice. You know, uh, webcam is a kind of missing link in our, in our uh, repertoire that would have made any, any digital camera into a webcam. Uh, so far, I'm just frustrated on that one. So. Um, yeah, media player. Uh, most media now plays on Ecom Station. You know, if you download a movie or, or you know, audio file, pretty much everything plays. So, you know, I, I'm still remembering when it didn't, you know, get whatever, it didn't play very well. Or it it would play for a while and then crash. Um, I'll just point but those two uh, I still have yeah. Media Player, and yeah, it's, it's, it, it's pretty nice. Together with Samba, I just you know browse Ecom Station. Okay, play this one now. And yeah. the iPad does have a better screen than, than any of my Ecom Station computers, so <laughs> I suppose it's still, still reasonable for the fan photos and movies with that. Um, yeah. Put a screenshot of it, but you know, basically you pick a uh, there's an SMB icon on there. Pick your computer, enter your password, and, and browse your files. It's not um, file browser was uh, a nice little piece, and that that's a Samba browser. Um, 
on the, on the iPad and together with some of the server on the Ecom Station machine, this really gives it a lot of power. I have a lot of other viewers besides India on the iPad. And so this, this is what really allows me to, uh, at least anywhere in the house, anywhere that has Samba service, to uh, use the iPad as my Ecom Station viewer. You know, it's just sort of an alternative terminal to Ecom Station in this, this way. Um, so I've browsed into my machine, and I can uh, look at whatever files I want, and I can copy them, paste them, delete them. I mean, basically, it, you know, it, it, it's like a file manager, except it's running on the iPad. Um, Neil, you mentioned that you know you could do this inside your house. But like right now, if you yeah. wanted to, to browse your computer, could you do that from here? I can, but not with this app. Okay. The, this app is I use it because it's actually slicker than the app I would have to use from here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, since you know, they keep improving this one, they keep improving the other app. Eventually, they'll improve them to the point where I think they're the same. But yeah. you know, right now. Uh, Using the FTP version of browsing, it's not as it's not as slick on the iPad, and that's just an iPad programming issue. It's not yeah. because of the com station or because FTP is worse somehow. Um, when I had the cheapest DSL, sharing my ecom station machine on uh, and then trying to access it from outside was slow because DSL is asymmetric. It might be pretty fast going down, but now I'm asking it to upload all my files. And that's not as quick. Uh -huh. uh, since then, I found I needed a faster service for other reasons, and so now I have pretty fast upload speeds. And so, what are you using now? I'm using uh, what they call a Comcast Business Cable. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it, it's substantially faster than the consumer kind, and mm -hmm. actually, I guess they have faster consumer ones too now. So. Like FiOS, Verizon FiOS has equal. Right, the, the business is not equal, but it's closer to equal, and so, but uh, yeah, uh, something like FiOS is available in many parts of my town, but not at my house. <laughs> <laughs> For the folks down the hill, yeah. are you still serving to them? What? Are you still serving to the folks down the hill? Remember you were their wireless hub for a while? Oh, uh, <laughs> no. No longer they moved? They moved. <laughs> yeah, uh, everybody's got wireless now, so. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, now I have to watch out, you know, because there's so many in my neighborhood that, you know, when I uh, have to pick out my own wireless, that it's from a big list. Um, contacts. Uh, as I thought about moving to an iPhone, I said, you know, I'm really going to have to have my phone numbers and everything working with that. And what, where are my contacts right now? Well, they're in Lotus Organizer. There's no app in the App Store for that. <laughs> well, I have a, a spreadsheet in Open. Oh, there's no app for that either. Okay, so I'll use the built-in Contacts app. What has it got? It uses a stack of V cards, and V cards is nice text plain text file, sort of XML based. And um, so plain text, that's good. Um, so I was able to look at their, my various pieces of, I, I didn't even have my contacts all in one place because why do I need them? In the e-com station I have my email and then I have, you know, I want to display something and then look at their phone number and dial it on my phone. Well, now I want to sort of converge them all and so I've been sort of exporting um, my little Rex program to turn it into V cards and then import them. Basically, I, I point the web browser of the iPad at my machine at the stack of V cards and it says, oh, is this your new contacts? Great. <laughs> and uh, so I'm able to keep sync contacts not automatically and not incrementally, but by the whole contacts anyway, uh, with the iPad and keep my latest contacts on the iPad. Uh, I, on PM Mail, it exports vCards, but they're not the same version as the iPad uses. So um, that's something on my to-do list, is to bring PMail up to the same version. And that would probably make a pretty clean interoperability between at least the PM Mail address book and contacts. But even now, I just 
export it as a CSV, run it through my Rex script, and be cards, and so I'm pretty close to that. Um, I'm not sure whether to polish up that Rex program until it's publishable and put it up on Mobs or something, but uh, not that many people are doing this, I think, at this point, so. Um, yeah, that's the contacts program, and is vCards an Apple origination? Is that where that came from? Or is where is vCards from? from? No. It's evolved from Apple. Way back in the yeah. Apple II days, they had that little card thing. It wasn't called vCards, it was something else. And then sort of vCards came out of that. Yeah. And then there's been, the iPad uses vCards 3.0. There have been more than three releases yeah. of it. <laughs> and now, actually, it's sort of been supplanted by except for the folks that still use them by something that's much more XML-ish. Yeah, the X card, I think. Yeah. And, but Apple's still on their V card thing. And I, I don't know if there, there may be easy ways to interconvert them. I looked for a V card editor online, and I did not see one. And I thought, that's so obvious. Why wouldn't there be a nice V card editor? I don't know. Yeah. I, don't know uh, I suppose know. you could look and say, well, this is a V card editor, but it's mm, not really. <laughs> yeah. But you can just select all your contacts and save them as a vCard stack, and then it's a plain text file, save it on the ecom station machine, and you can back all your contacts from your phone onto the ecom station machine, reverse that Rex program, and it goes into whatever programs in ecom station you want. So this is sort of the, the flow through. It's kind of crude right now, but you know, that's, um, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't moved up to the smartphone yet. You know, I thought, oh, I'll, I'll have plenty of time to buy one before Borgstock, but it hasn't happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay. VNC viewer, there are a lot of VNC viewers in the App Store. I, I use the real VNC one, but the, the others work too. Um, and it warns you that you've got an unencrypted connection, and you can turn off the warning if you want. One of the things I found was that sometimes I screw up my machine and it's not listening to its uh, mouse and keyboard anymore. And I used to just say, oh, okay, reset button. And now, I go, oh, VNC viewer, bring out my Bluetooth keyboard. <laughs> I can still use the machine and you know, stop, stop programs. And so uh, that's pretty neat. Uh, and just the whole idea that now with this VNC viewer, I can use just about any Bluetooth peripheral with ecom station is kind of a neat, neat thing. I didn't bring one to show. <laughs> so it'll just list all the machines that you can connect to, the eyes. When you hit that, it lets you put in the IP address or uh, host name of the system and its password and connect to it. Uh, OK. <sighs> Mail. Yeah, it's just you know, how does IMAP work? You know, Mail. Actually, Mail and iPad can use POM or IMAP, and I connected it to my POP server on my ecom station machine, and it was great, but I don't know. I wanted, to, I wanted to have something that sort of worked everywhere, and so I switched to IMAP and then tried to use it on various places, and it's difficult to set up uh, Thunderbird to use the iPad email on iCloud, or the iCloud IMAP server. There's many directions on the internet, uh, most of them are wrong. And, um, eventually I just read them until I got sort of the combination of settings that worked. Um, you know, it's not that hard to set up an IMAP server on, on Thunderbird, you just need the right information. And I should probably make a web page, but this is how it's done. <laughs> um, so, Having Thunderbird use it, the iCloud suite under Firefox uses mail, and then the, the iPad itself. The iPad email program is horrible. I mean, I'm comparing it to like PM mail and going, ick. <laughs> so um, I guess on a phone, you, you're not going to be that picky. It's <coughs> not my email, great. <laughs> That's better than I could ever imagine. But, you know, well, where's like message filters, whereas you know, there's a lot of things that are just missing. And I, I'm disappointed with the Apple app 
Uh, I went on a Macintosh and I was equally disappointed with it there. So I, I just think they have a different idea of how an email is used than I do. Um, I'm going to show each one of these. Okay. Mail on the iPad. So every message, decide what to do with it. You know, it's, it's clunky. It works, but there's no features. It's just. And there are folders available. You can make folders and by hand move them there, but you know, it doesn't it doesn't auto sort. It doesn't do anything. You know, and so it, I'm kind of disappointed with it, but at least it works and it's portable. Uh, with iCloud, I have not been able to figure out how to send an email from my real address, not the iCloud address. So I'm, I'm very hesitant to you even use it to send email. You know, there's other ways to send email from the iPad, so I, I don't actually send from this program because then all my mail would start coming to my iCloud email address, which I don't really want to use. I have an email address, and it goes to my account station machine. The mail's in my account station machine. So uh, that would be one thing. If I switch to an account station hosted IMAP server, then I can dispense with the iCloud email entirely, and that's probably the best best thing for me. But I have again, got around to it. Um, what are the IMAP servers? We Peter Moylan's, which is kind of dicey with large numbers of files. It doesn't scale work. Yeah, and that that's uh, that's a no no good for me. It doesn't yeah. have to scale well. It's probably fixable. It's just the, yeah. I don't know if Peter has the energy to do it. No, it doesn't sound like it. And you know, I, I wouldn't want to press him too hard on that. Um, I, you know, it's, Peter's a classic academic. You know, yeah. He's really knowledge about, knowledgeable about the stuff he knows about. The other stuff, you know, I just shake my head sometimes. Uh -huh. I'd say it's people. Yeah. Yeah. Having that program scale would be nice, but. Well, it's easy enough to do. Uh -huh. Because, for instance, for years, you know, he's been building with like a 12 megabyte stack. Okay. Which isn't so bad, but he didn't know he could expand. Uh huh. Yeah, and that sort of helped a little bit in that area, you know, so yeah. The, uh, his other applications scale much better than they used to. So PML's just gotten less attention. Uh yeah. We Plus see. little things like having accept queue. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, in my humble opinion, the debug system that's built into uh, module two has got awful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get this little RTS thing with no data. Yeah. And, hey, the logic's fine. The code is doing what it's doing. I know how it got there. Show me the data where it got corrupted. On. Yeah. So, you know, I got he's got exception support all apps now. And things are much better. Probably if that debugging system were better, he would have already got the bugs fixed. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. and then yeah. now it's up to whoever takes over yeah. for so, Weasel. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you watch his style as long as he can replicate it himself, he can fix it. Yeah. But if it's somebody else's problem, he always had a really hard time. Yeah. It took him a lot longer. Yeah. Yeah. Someone could probably give him a data set that had a lot of files in it. Yeah. There you but are. But, still, but the other thing is, it's still not really his skill set. He's not that good with accepting dumps yet. But of course, you know, I can help him with it. And you say, hey, look at this data. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it might be that with a big with the right data set, he wouldn't even need to be good at it, except yeah. Yeah, I hope. But, and Robert, you were about to say. Uh, well, I'm still using the trial version of Communicate. Yeah. Uh, I have that yeah. set up. And, right. and you're yeah, using, using Communicate also. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Communicate's really good. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, old talks quite yeah. well. And it holds up pretty well. Yeah. yeah. Is the trial yeah. version still available? Yeah. No, we have a page version. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I think it needs a little different. Yeah, I think Lewis has the paid version too. Yeah, Lewis yeah. has the paid version, I think. And there's, I, I thought their uh, their community version is updated, like up to five or ten users. Um, you could use without the uh, little banner that mine still has when I receive email from me. Lewis keeps harassing me to upgrade my community server, but uh -huh. it's still running on a PCS 1.0 box. It's a 200 megahertz <laughs> one. <laughs> 92 meg of RAM yeah, yeah, and a 5 gig hard drive. And how many messages do you can process? Not that many. <laughs> 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 okay.
Well, I, I get quite, I get a certain amount because my wife has managed to get herself on about a million and a half spam distribution list. Well, so, ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, to, me, me too. Having the same email address and being very public with it for a long that, time. No numbers in it. Oh, no numbers in it. Yeah, for some reason, you know, my Steve 53, it just happened to pick it, and it doesn't get as much spam as it should. And you have a very public email. You, you've that, got that everywhere. I don't try to hide it at all. Yeah, no. Now, I use, because I can't get myself to switch over to PM mail, I still use MR2 ice cream, uh -huh. and its filters are simply better. Okay, yeah. They're just easier to, yeah. to set up. And eventually, when I switch over to PM mail, I will have to talk about that <laughs> and see what we can do. Yes, yes. I mean, I went through the labor of learning to use PM mail filters, and now that I've learned it, I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, they work. They're just hard to set up. They're a lot more time consuming to set up. Yeah. Something that I can say if this and this and this or this and you know, just simple linear and or expressions. Yeah. And everything that I don't know ends up goes into the review folder. The mm -hmm. whitelist and stuff gets whitelist and I get very little spam in my inbox in my inbox. Yeah. The other folks like to filter everything in folders, but the problem is that I got a hundred folders to read. That makes me too much. It's easier to use the inbox as my to do list. That's just the style for them. Sure, sure. But no, a lot of people have that style. And yeah, so at some point, if I'm not, I haven't looked at that code real hard other than say, oh, there it is. Yeah. You know, I, it, had, it worked for me. And yeah. so I didn't have to touch it. And so, but at some point, that would be a nice conversation to have because, you know, I'd like to see PML improve. There's, there's a lot of issues still. Yeah, and it does need, and from people I know that stress it, here it needs a performance tutor. It really needs a performance tutor badly. Uh, uh, James made a change to use XML uh, meta information for all the folders, and that's, that's become very slow. But the good Some, news is it's become very scalable. And that's it. I, I put a it's million messages into it, and it still works. <laughs> <laughs> now, the XML is a good change because there's so much more maintainable. Okay, 70 seconds on my fastest machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love to go back to PM Mail. I had to switch away from it when I switched to IMAP. I, you know, for the same sort of thing, yeah. being able to access it yeah. from <coughs> wherever you machine. I made that call a long time ago. Yeah. And um, and I, I just have never liked Thunderbird. So. Right. Now well, James said it's his intention to implement IMAP. And he actually has put hooks in there to make it you know, start experimenting with it, but then he stopped working entirely. He's so busy with other things right now, he's not really doing anything with the email. We're, we're at a very quiet time for changes, which would be like a great time for me to upgrade the address book without stepping on anyone's toes, but <laughs> I'll see if I get time. Um, okay, syncing bookmarks and passwords for the web browser. Um, this has never worked that well, but the problem is that Apple and Firefox are having a war. And um, I don't like that. You know, it, it would have been much better for one side to give in. How much worse would Firefox have been if you ripped out Gecko and used the WebKit? I don't think it would have been that bad. And it's up to the app developer to make the interface work. But Firefox said, no, over our dead bodies. And, okay. and Apple, why are they insisting that you can't you port Gecko? To the iPad. Why, what, what's, what's that about? So I don't. I think both sides are wrong. <laughs> Mercury is a web browser. Mercury is a web browser. It uses WebKit like all the other web browsers on the uh, Apple equipment. And there's a Firefox plugin. Do I have that later? To to sync your. No, that's just that's just the picture of my Mercury browser. Okay. Now. There's a Firefox plugin to sync uh, bookmarks on, uh, from Firefox to Mercury. So it basically keeps your bookmarks and passwords synced. Or I think there's a whole list of other uh, browser attributes that it keeps synced um, with, I guess, their own cloud storage. And then on the iPad, it keeps sync. And I find, and from the reviews, a lot of people have found their plugin for Firefox to be very buggy. So what I see is I install it as an extension, and then my bookmarks start moving around, particularly 
that separator starts moving, migrating. You know, every time I look at my bookmarks, the separators are in a new place. And I think, that's not good. They're eventually going to corrupt my bookmarks. And they make my passwords too on, on, the, on the browser. So I'm not pleased about that. And yet, here it is. It's performing the functionality. It did sync my bookmarks. You know, I change one, and eventually it appears on the iPad. So, I mean, I guess I like the functionality, and I'm hopeful that they'll fix their bugs. You know, uh, this is, since our Firefox is so close to other platforms of Firefox, it's very likely that their bugs are on all platforms, and it, it should get the attention um, eventually. Uh, at first, I used a different uh, app, and it was very clumsy. And I said, I'm never doing this again. But I got my bookmarks to the iPad once. And I thought, well, that's good. <laughs> but uh, now I have real-time syncing. It's just uh, I don't like to keep it turned on because it's going to corrupt my bookmarks eventually. So I'm waiting for new versions of that. Ah, iBooks. This is the book reader for iPads, built-in app. And what I found was that it makes a really nice PDF viewer. Um, in fact, most PDFs that I get on Ecom Station, rather than use this uh, or, or QPDF view, I actually prefer to use the uh, uh, iBooks on iPad to read the PDF. It's just, it's a slicker interface. It, it just, it, it seems to work a lot better for me. You know, if you have a 300 page PDF, it's just hard to read on my Ecom Station machine. Um, and iBooks, you know, it keeps, keeps hard, you where you were. Hard to read because it's slow or hard to read because it's got a bad picture? Um, the picture's all right. It's fast on Ecom Station, but, um, you know, I, I put it down or I, I exit from it and it doesn't keep its place. It, you know, it doesn't remember, remember what I was doing with it last. Yeah. Whereas iBooks remembers my bookmark on every file that's stored in the iPad. Mm -hmm. so, you know, it, 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 it's a lot better. And it's, it's just usability features. You know, it just, it, it makes it easier for me. You know, I guess, yeah, I'm reading, I'm interrupted, or I have to go do something. I want to come back and read some more. And, <laughs> no, I can't. Usually because some other program I was using my Ecom station that was the interruption crashed the machine and I had to reboot. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, iOS 8 problems. Yeah. Uh, I first prepared this presentation when iOS 7 was the current version. I upgraded to iOS 8, 8.0, and so a lot of my demonstration features didn't work, and that's a large reason why I'm on slides right now. Retuning <laughs> uh, fix it? I didn't, it's, it's still sitting waiting to be installed on my machine. 8.1 fixed it a little bit, but... 8.2 uh, was supposed to fix a bunch of problems. But I would guess it would. I mean, they, they're good about fixing their problems eventually. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of experienced users have said never get you know whatever version dot o just skip it just just let it sit there saying I want to install it and wait for dot one or, or higher to come out so uh, yeah so eventually I did get to where I like having uh, apps on the machine and you know the modern world shopping for groceries but. Having the, even my grocery store is now syncing what I do on the iPad with their website, so I can you know, make my grocery list on the iPad and edit it on the Econ Station and go back and forth. And so this is sort of the, the new world, I think. You know, just your stuff's stored up there, and I, I granted I'm now putting my grocery preferences scannable for their marketing pleasure. Um, I'm not sure that's wrong. I actually kind of sometimes go and buy something there just to send their cloud app a message that I want them to stock this particular grocery in the store. Uh, I'm not sure that works. Uh, <laughs> I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> oh, okay. FTP client plus. This is the one that I use when I'm out in the field. You know, I'm I'm here. I could be browsing my files from this room using the FTP Client Plus. Uh, opening files is cumbersome. That's why I like the FTP, 
the file browser over Samba better. But um, since I made this slide, there's a new version of FTP client that's not quite as kludgy. On an iPad, you have an app, and then it has certain capabilities, and then it says, I don't, don't know what to do with this file. And it, then I guess this is like a Macintosh. It says, what, what app is supposed to open this file? And so I've been able to associate, but it doesn't remember that. Every time I get that app, it says, well, what app do you want to use? And it gives me this whole menu of apps. Um, some, the way it was before, I'd actually have to upload the file, or you know, bring the file to the iPad, put it in something called the home directory, and then open it there. And then I you know, have to remember, I don't know, I, I didn't get that much memory on my iPad to delete it afterwards. And uh, so I, you know, that wasn't that good. I'd like to just see it go there and it runs out of memory to delete all my old files. But I, I, I don't really want to keep any files on the iPad other than my not pretty much, pretty much none. <laughs> um, but that's me left browsing all my drive letters on my home computer. And there's the home directory that I mentioned. A photo library, this is where I can uh, take a picture, hit photo library, copy, and then paste using the FTP server onto my Ecom station machine. So I can actually uh, sync the camera with my home computer even though I'm here. So uh, iTunes, I'll get to that. <laughs> oh, OK, Ooh Reader. Um, I, I, I saw John give his demo on the, uh, or give his presentation on his uh, Surface or whatever, the Windows machine, Blackberry. And uh, I'll say that the, the presentations on iPad are slicker um, than, than what he was showing. It, they, iOS does, does make a fairly set of, good set of things for making apps work nicely. And so I, I could have done this demo on the iPad, or done this presentation on iPad. Um, but it's read-only, and uh, someone gave me an annotated uh, text document. I think it was Lewis gave me an annotated text document. The notes just don't show up in Ubu Reader, so it doesn't ha have all the features that OpenOffice ought to have. And I expect that to improve. Um, obviously, these guys have the source code for OpenOffice, and they can make as much of it work as they want. And that they're not trying to make something that edits on the iPad, which you know, could work, but I, I'm not that concerned about editing on the iPad. It's sort of an inconvenient thing and without a keyboard, which I don't usually bring with me. I don't want to use a word processor pecking out individual letters on their key, keyboard that they display on the, on does, the iPad. Does OpenOffice work on any Apple machine? Oh, on the Mac, it's... <laughs> It's a full, fully supported platform. So, so it's just on these kind of devices. On these devices, uh, yeah, you go to the App Store and download Ubu Reader. And I have not found another one. Once I found this, it met my needs. So if one has come up recently, I would have missed it. But uh, it's certainly possible. You know, there's. But I don't know how long it takes for someone to port open office. Do they have their own set of off kind of office applications? They sure do. That you can edit and like can those things open this format of files? No. 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 Oh. Okay. Um, they can open up Microsoft Office files. Um, Microsoft Office can now open open office files. But uh, you know, pages or what are they called? Right, pages. That's okay. Yeah, that, that's the notes I had for this, <coughs> showing the Ubu Reader. And uh, yeah, works nicely. And again, just real slick, you know, just scrolling through a document, searching, everything is pretty pretty nice on it. When I started out, I said, I, I, I want to connect for files, which turned out to be useless. Um, and so I got a Ubi disk, which is a FTP server for iPad. I suppose any iOS device. And so you can go and send files to the iPad. But since each app has sort of its own access to limited directory space on the iPad, you can't get to anything good. And now that I think about it, you don't want it. So you know, I, I guess if you want to use your iPad as a memory stick, 
very expensive memory stick. You can, but I don't find that as an exciting capability. But uh, I was able to mount the iPad as a drive lever under NetDrive and you know, <laughs> use any OS2 file manipulation program to send files to and from the iPad, but I guess. Yeah, not as usual as I thought. So you can always send it from the FTP server running on the OS2 side and push it over to two, so. Well, yeah, now that I have the client, yeah, the, 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 and the, it had the same home directory. Uh, iTunes, no ECS client. I, that, that pretty much stopped me right there. Um, I haven't really explored iTunes to see if it can do anything else. Um, so, you know, as far as my music library, it's just plain files on ecom station and I play it using the file browser. So iTunes, useless for me, but there, there may be some use to it. Um, certainly, as far as using the iPad as the car stereo, it would be better to have iTunes. Now, I, I have a VW. It really expected me to use iTunes. <laughs> so. uh, OK, I guess I, oh, there we are. Pages, numbers, and keynote are the, the built-in uh, text. Office Suite for iPad and uh, Macintosh, and uh, they work. Keynote, I haven't really used Keynote, but I've seen some pretty well-written reviews that claim clean Keynote's pretty much a top dog in presentations at this point. So it's great. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm using Open Office. <laughs> um, and I sort of showed you all these apps on the iPad. But, um, so this is what the screen looks like on um, Ecom Station on the Firefox browser. And uh, they're pretty slick and they're fast. Um, so what, what Firefox do you use currently? The I'm 10 using, or the newer one? I'm using the 24, um, but it worked on 10, it worked on 17, it worked on both 24s. Um, it, and it says it's unsupported. You know, it says, no, you're not using the right kind of Firefox or whatever. It says it's unsupported, and then it works pretty well. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, have I ever had a, I don't think I've ever had anything fail. Under 24. Under 24. Um, using 24 long enough, I'll, something happens to the comp station. And it doesn't, everything sort of breaks down. But that's not limited to this web app, you know, pretty much anything I do, any serious amount of web browsing will eventually exhaust the machine. So actually this one is pretty pretty calm about that. It does I can use this for a long time before it lets out. So um, mail is sort of the same screen. Uh, actually using mail in Firefox is more powerful and better than using it on an iPad native program. It's not much better. It's still an Apple product that we didn't really think through the mail. But uh, contacts. This has also been pretty good uh, as far as uh, there's a little gear in there that does the import and export. So I don't even actually have to have the iPad present at all to do import and export of my contact list. Um, I have had bugs with this, and that may be Firefox, but it's more likely iCloud. iCloud has had very high visibility bugs anyway, and I expect that that's no different for me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just hitting bugs in iCloud. Uh, that's an Apple program, iCloud. iCloud is their back end. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's all their web services, and you know, they're, they're running it on whatever Apple has for you know, a distributed what do you call that? Distributed server. Uh, calendar. <laughs> I'm so far behind the times. I'm just learning to use a calendar. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I want to, I'm, I'm sort of not used to using an automated calendar. I want a printed calendar to ha have with me, you know, and then write on and then update my web calendar. And, uh, you can't print from iCloud, you can't print from iPad. 
you want to print a calendar, you have to go to Windows or Mac. Fortunately, mm -hmm. there's a Mac in the house, and I get on there and print the calendar like once a month or twice a month. But uh, I, that's a that's a big lack. And printing on the Mac is poorly worked out. I'm, I'm sort of refreshed to see. You know, I always thought, oh gosh, you know, that that the weak point of econ station printing is so weak, and it's greatly improved than when I started using OS2, but it's still not not good, but now I see the Mac has reached to our level of performance on printing. The calendar is kind of nice as far as, you know, multiple calendars and standards compliant. Uh, Lewis sent me the presentation schedule for uh, Warp Stock and I was able to view it on here. It didn't stick, I don't understand that. Another iCloud issue probably. Okay, notes. I was showing how I'm using notes to the diary, and it works nicely on that. This is how I use it mostly. I'm mostly sitting at my econ station machine, but I want to make notes, and so I'll type it into the web browser, but it's nice to have it on the iPad when I get up and go someplace. Um, yeah, I haven't used pages, numbers, and Keynote that much. Um, better support for new MS formats than OpenOffice. Yeah, I had a, a one that wouldn't open in OpenOffice. Most of the new ones do open. Um, certain certain ones don't. I'm not sure what the limitations are, but uh, I had been working with people using the new Microsoft formats, and I didn't want to tell them I was not running Windows, so I didn't, and I just would save them out, and they'd keep getting back their docx file, and it was fine, and they never realized, and. It wasn't until I had a spreadsheet and then had to go back as an XLS instead of an SLX X that they kind of, but you know, you could do that on Windows too. So uh, I still didn't really talk about it. And uh, that, that's pretty nice. Now I'm interoperating, I send OpenOffice docs direct. And since MS Office opens them, I, I think they know, but you know, it's, it's, it works. So. Um, yeah, more useful for Mac and ECS, uh, well, perhaps useful for people who use both Mac and ECS, the pages, numbers, and keynote. Um, yeah. I don't know any, actually I do know a few big organizations that are all Macs. You know, everyone in the corporation has to have a Mac and has to use a Mac. Um, I'm not contracted with them. Somebody who standardizes on all Macs for everyone in the corporation doesn't have a need for OS2 or Constation support, apparently, so far. So. All right, Ecom Station. Thunderbird, I hadn't been really using Thunderbird before I got the iPad and started using it for mail. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty impressed that it, it, it has been working very well for me. Um, PM Mail, I did the round trip on contacts. I think I described how the address book is got the wrong format of e-cards, so I just export it as a comma-separated variable uh, file and just hack it into a e-cards file. Um, we got Firefox for the iCloud. Firefox for syncing bookmarks and passwords. I guess I described that with the Mercury Connect plugin and camaraderie. Those are the, yeah, Thunderbird. So when you're on a, one of these Apple machines, um, you can't use Firefox or some of those kind of applications? Right. Firefox has a religious war going on with Apple and vice versa. And Apple has picked a few religious wars. One of them is WebKit. If, they want, if you're on an Apple one, there's Firefox for Macintosh, but not for the no, iOS. Devices, right? iOS is, you, if you're going to use a web browser, they will require you to use WebKit for it. Firefox is all about Gecko, so they're not going to use WebKit, and so they have kind of a big difference. Um, Thunderbird has filters; it has all the features of a modern email program. So I can, uh, you know, I get behind on my email. I can just go to Fire Thunderbird and say, "Fix it for me," and uh, you know, run, run all my filters on on the inbox and it sorts everything, throws out stuff that I want to throw out. I'm very, very pleased with uh, Thunderbird making iPad email actually work for me. 
Uh, oh, okay. That's just not treatable. Oh well. I'd hope to show the, how, how the settings are. There are just two settings pages that uh, you get conflicting information about, but uh, you know you want to set up your uh, IMAP server and your SMT, SMTP server on, on Thunderbird. And the directions on Apple's website, the directions on other websites are all partly correct. And uh, if you correct, combine the correct parts, eventually you'll have functioning email. Uh, and I had written them here, but I, the screenshot didn't work so well. So. But, and on, on these little Apple things, you, can you use like Gmail? I mean, yeah. you can. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. why would you use um, iCloud? Just because it fits in better or something? Or? Um, I, I guess I was more, more suspicious of Google than of Apple. So I said, I'll, I'll use Apple. It doesn't matter what you use. Why? Uh -huh. Why? Why? Because I, I know people at Apple, and I don't know people at Google. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that doesn't you know, I was one step away from Steve Jobs. Yeah, Apple. but you know, I <laughs> but, but I got a niece or a, a niece who worked at Facebook back when she was small. Yeah. Does that mean I trust Facebook? <laughs> uh, yeah, I I have a similar kind of. Um, connection to Facebook and oh boy do I not trust it. <laughs> I use it but trust? No. <laughs> Even worse, she was an artist who went into marketing. Oh, okay. Yes. Wow. <laughs> oh, so I take it you didn't go through this exercise on an Android type device? No, I didn't. And yeah. I don't see any reason why all of this wouldn't work slightly differently uh -huh. with Gmail, the Google Suite, Pretty much the and and an Android. It, uh, yes. I, I, I have an Android device. Yeah. So do I have an Android Right. Device. Yeah. I, I, I don't see. And in fact, I think Google Suite is better than Apple Suite. But I, you know, because of my connections with Apple, I wanted to use Apple. And I was like, guys, yeah. spend a lot of time just, well, which is it? Which is it? And I finally said, okay, I'll, I'll go with Apple. But so you're not out throwing rocks at those busters. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> 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 but they, have to take course, they have. Yeah. A recent survey showed that fifty percent of the traffic over the Santa Cruz Mountains to Silicon Valley is those buses. Fifty percent wow. of commuters are now using those buses. What about on seventeen? Is yeah. That what it is? Yeah, on seventeen. <clears throat> yeah, okay. And that was a small road back when I was up there. It was a long, long time ago. Well, a long time ago, it was really scary. Now it's kind of like a regular highway, except it has to go through uh, an earthquake form mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty snaky road, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the earthquake left some of the curves, and they, what do you call it, reverse bank? Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> so, yeah, it, uh, occasionally you find a person who has freaked out. and. Uh, doesn't know what to do. They're still at the wheel, but they're not driving anymore. <laughs> so I can see why they want to have a bus that has Wi-Fi the whole way. You know, you got you know, they're very deluxe. So you just want to get a Google car then. You know, take care of <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it'll happen here first, or it'll happen there first. <laughs> yeah, but um, no, I'm not throwing rocks yet, and uh, I'm, I'm sure it's enriching our town somehow, some mm -hmm. some way. Um, likewise, I'm not throwing rocks at Microsoft. Uh, they've got a nice suite. They've got a, an operating system for tablets, phones. Uh, it, it would probably work very similar way with the Uh I have not tried it, but I'll bet it works. Um, you know, Microsoft has been pretty good about following standards, actually. And uh, did I leave out any brands? <laughs> I, think, I think Blackberry is on. I'm trying to figure out how I want to use an obscure operating system. I should use an obscure phone as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> has made itself obscure, so. Okay. No <laughs> here, from what I hear. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, the notes. Yeah, I can edit my notes on Thunderbird and make a round trip on those. So those are stored no. as email documents inside of I whatever it is. Yes. iCloud is it? iCloud stores them as IMAP documents. Uh -huh. So 
uh, if they're available to, they are, I, I correct myself, they are not round trip here. These, these are read only. Um, Thunderbird isn't built to edit me email messages you have received. It's built to reply to them. So, no, it, right. it doesn't, it doesn't. Maybe it has a capability, I haven't found it, but I think it just doesn't have that. And that would involve uh, changing it and saving it back in the IMAP server. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's an IMAP capability, but it's, you know, that's not what Thunderbird was made for. But it's still nice that I got my notes, and Thunderbird has better searching than other programs that can grab my notes. So. And what makes them a note? Is it like in a special folder or something? Or how, how yeah, it's just in a special folder. Um, and you can even rename that folder, you know, if you rename it on all, all the places that I access it. But um, I haven't. Um, time? Okay. Uh, I think I mentioned uh, everything about PM mail. Uh, am I going backwards? No, there we go. <laughs> I didn't want you to cut Andy too short. No. And uh, I should have ended earlier.